welcome to Building Chops with Chef C. Today I'm going to show you how to make Ruby's Spaghetti, which we are now calling Ruby Sketti. <laughs> it's uh, spaghetti squash and quinoa pasta with a nice red sauce. I'm going to start by showing you how to get into the spaghetti squash. If you've seen the butternut squash video, it's very similar. You have a very, very hard squash. This one is a tiny bit softer than some, but typically the spaghetti squash has a really hard shell. So you're going to need a good knife. I'm going to use my Yusuba cleaver and we're going to hack off the stem. As you can see, whoa, man overboard! Throw my life preserver! Oh, here comes Smarty. He's going to eat it. And then you stand it up on the flat spot, get up on your tippy toes, just like we did with the butternut. Get a little leverage working for you, work your knife in, and hopefully make a nice split. And there it is, that's the interior of the spaghetti squash. Just like with the butternut squash, wow, it's super fragrant. Wish you could smell it, we need a scratch and sniff video. Um, but just like with the butternut squash, we're going to bake it. And I like to use Pyrex because it tends not to stick as much and it gives a nice moist uh, cooking environment, moister than metal. And we're going to cook it seed side down. I have the oven preheated. It's 350 degrees and it's going to take about 40 minutes just until a knife goes easily in and out of the squash. And then when it's done, we're going to flip it over, scoop it out, and I'll show you the rest of that in the rest of this video. Into the oven. I have uh, pulled it out of the oven, and what you want to do is take a fork and poke it in. And when it goes in, just nice and easy like that, pull the squash out. You want to be careful not to overcook it so that we can keep the threads intact. So as soon as you get it out of the oven, flip it upside down, let it sit for a few minutes, and then pull the seeds out. It's very easy to do. Just use a fork and just carefully pull the seeds out of the out of the shell. I'm just gonna, it's very hot, I usually let it sit a little bit, but let's get them out of there. We wanna get the squash <clears throat> out of the skin and thinned out, spread thinly on a pan so it can cool because it's gonna continue to cook as it sits inside the shell. And we don't want that. Now it's hot, so be careful. But take it and you take your fork and just pull with the tines of the fork, pull the spaghetti squash away from the edges. You can see it's still really steamy. That's why getting it out of the shell right away is important because it will get very soft and mushy and then they won't look as much like strands of spaghetti. Just dig underneath there and then spill it out onto the pan. Quite nice. Nice golden threads of squash. Going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to end up with about probably about four cups total of spaghetti squash. I'm going to save the rest for my dog because he loves spaghetti squash, as it turns out. Don't you, smarts? You love spaghetti squash, yeah. Anyway, do that with both sides of the squash. Spread it out on a pan and then throw it in your refrigerator for a couple minutes and really stop that cooking process. I'm going to show you the pasta that I'm going to blend this with now. Um, we're going to be using quinoa pasta. Oh, <laughs> and it is made from quinoa, which is um, called a super grain. It's, was, uh, it's grown in South America. It was the, the staple grain of the Inca culture, and it has a uh, very high protein content. It's gluten free, so for those of you that are watching gluten intake or have trouble digesting uh, you know, foods with gluten, this is a good choice for you. Now the reason why we like it is because of its golden color. Quinoa is naturally golden and you can see how well this is going to blend with this spaghetti squash. We have about uh, two ounces of pasta here, I know, because I've got it on a scale and I'm making two servings. So we'll have uh, one cup of spaghetti squash cooked mixed with one ounce of cooked pasta and that will be the serving size. The recipe for spaghetti squash pasta with turkey bolognese is in the recipe portion of the website. So take a look and follow. Okay, so the next phase of the process in making ruby spaghetti is cooking the pasta and it's pretty standard stuff. It's uh, boiling water and I do add some salt to it but I don't put any oil in the water. It's not really necessary. Our sauce 
is simmering away, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit. What I did was I sauteed a little bit of onion and some mushrooms. You can put in bell peppers, you can put in squash, whatever. So this is sort of a semi-homemade sauce. It's just easy to do. This is a really good tasting product. It's pretty reasonably priced, and I get about five servings out of one jar. So it's a, it's a good tasting sauce. There's different flavors that it comes in. I just got the Italian herb. So I put onions, mushrooms, the red sauce, and then with Ruby's spaghetti, I use ground turkey breast. I cook the turkey breast with the onions to brown it and then add the other parts. Tonight I'm doing, though, veggie meatballs because we're keeping it all veggie. So these are a soy meatball product. So there's our sauce. It's ready to go. I'm just going to shut it off and let it sit. I also added a bunch of garlic to it. Taste it. See what you'd like. You can add more basil, oregano, fresh or dried herbs. A little bit of red pepper flakes if you like a little more heat. If you want a little sugar, you can put a little drop of agave nectar in the sauce and just make it taste nice for yourself. The pasta is pretty standard cooking time. It just takes uh, about uh, five minutes for that to, to get cooked. And then uh, I've got the spaghetti squash here. It's nice and cooled off. I am going to put a tiny little bit of olive oil on the spaghetti squash, probably about a teaspoon of nice extra virgin olive oil just because it gives it a nice flavor and I do season the squash with salt and pepper before I combine it and I'm just going to mix this with the uh, with the quinoa pasta when it's ready in a skillet and I'll show you that step as well. Okay, so this is what the uh, two ounces of cooked pasta looks like. This is two servings. One ounce of cooked pasta is a hundred calories. So I've got the two servings in there. I'm just going to drop it back into the same pot that I just cooked it in. I'm just going to use my fingers to pull about a cup of the spaghetti squash out. So we're going to add this much spaghetti squash for each serving and I'm serving two people. So we're going to put in two cups. Two cups of spaghetti squash is about 50, 54 calories. So we're getting going to have 154 calories in two cups of the pasta base. And it's actually a fairly large amount if you look at it. I'm just going to toss that around a little bit. There's a little bit of oil on this on the squash. You may have to put it back on the stove for a minute and just warm it up a little bit, which is what I'm going to do. But that's the serving size for two people, so it's fairly substantial. You'll see, I'm going to plate it. So we're ready to dish up our spaghetti. I'm going to divide this amongst two, two, two bowls. And we have, as I said, one cup of the cooked pasta combined with one cup of the cooked spaghetti squash. And you can see how beautifully the colors of these two foods blend, which is really nice. If you're cooking for kids, that's a good thing, or adults that are you know, a little skeptical about changing the way they are, want to eat their pasta, keeping the color very consistent is a good thing. And then we're going to use one cup of sauce. And with this, as I said, we're doing veggie meatballs, so I'm going to put three veggie meatballs along with one cup of the sauce on each serving. <gasps> On top of Old Smoky, all covered with veggie meatballs. That's it. Very nice. Very nice portion size. And then to keep this dinner vegan, which is what we're doing tonight, we're going to use veggie parmesan cheese and just use some of that. This is 15 calories in two tablespoons, so got a very, very low calorie content. So we're going to go for the full two tablespoons. And of course you can dress this up even more with some nice fresh chopped basil and finish it up. I don't have any fresh basil yet because it's too early in the spring for me to have basil growing. But there you have your ruby spaghetti, slightly modified with veggie meatballs instead of the turkey bolognese, but the method is the same. Check out the recipe. Have fun. See ya.